hit the record button. I am. Okay. <laughs> there you go. I was hearing that. Shalom, everyone. Shalom. Shalom. Welcome. How's everyone doing? Very nice. Very good. 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 Um, let's be uh, mindful and pray for our brother Scott down in the recovery area. Um, his work is just beginning. Um, very dangerous work, cutting trees, power lines, stuff like that. Um, so he's kind of be thought thoughtful for Scott. Uh, he's trying to get electricity turned on for those people down on the coast down there. Man, that storm really. Whoo. It's a mm. mess, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I, I was looking at WX Chasing's video, the flight down the coast, where just every once in a while you'll see a structure that's still there. But foundation after foundation, as far as you can see, it's just white, clean. Um, roads washed out, bridges gone, you know, boats and stuff pushed way up on land. And just tremendous amount of destruction. Yeah, America's not being judged. It's going to be seven times great again. Don't forget that. So, of course, I'm being tongue-in-cheek sarcastic. Mind you, um, Elijah did the same thing. He mocked the bales. So, it, you know, it's not something that's abnormal. Um, I don't mean to make light of those people who lost homes or even lost a life. A, young, a little girl, 11 years old, lost her life um, down there. So... My point is, the chastening is here. We see it all around the world, guys. Uh, I mean, not just this country, everywhere. I focus on this country because this is where I'm, you know, where I'm based in the United States. But you look everywhere, even Australia, where Terrence is. It's horrible. This drought's done down there. These ranchers have lost, you know, all his cattle and other things that are happening, even in their government. They've had the same kind of things where they've, the, the gay marriage stuff and other kind of very similar to the Obama administration. We've seen this all around the world. Germany, one of the worst of them. I mean, gosh, far left. What's happening in Europe, that far left mentality, it's everywhere. The whole world is coming under judgment. So I hear some obviously and blatantly fake prophet telling or, and selling books on top of it that America's going to be great again, you know, and it's not even connected to the Bible. I made this reference to Jonathan Connell in my broadcast last night, where at least he was citing scriptures in his analysis of Isaiah nine, you know, exactly what our senators quoted in the Senate after nine 11 straight from scripture. We will rebuild again. It was basically a declaration of rebellion. Um, Fast forward into the Trump administration. Some in the you know Christian world interpret that. You know, this is going to be better. Things are going to be better. And I'm looking at scripture where it says, you know, every nation where I've driven you, I'm going to fully make a full end. I'm going to destroy it. And so I'm in, you know, this debate with somebody about how is this possible if America's going to be seven times as great again? And then the full end comes. That doesn't make any sense. You know, why would you who would make this country seven times as great again and then be completely destroy it? Doesn't make sense. So it doesn't add up. You know, it doesn't this it doesn't jive with the scriptures. Matter of fact, he doesn't quote any scriptures in his Trump prophecies books. It's all about what was revealed to him by the Spirit of the Lord. That's his words. He don't even come in the name of the Father, he comes in his own name. Trump it's, 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 Mark it's, it's interesting you brought up uh, Isaiah 9. You were talking about that. I looked at it. I'm looking at that in the codes right now. Isaiah 9, and it's got, it's got John, America, John, and all that in there. Yeah, you when, know, when I searched it out in the codes on there, Jonathan Kahn, and I, was, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have a dog in the fight. I wasn't trying to verify or, or negate Jonathan Kahn. I wanted to see what the codes were. Revealed and line after line after line showed me that the most high was calling this man as a messenger to the nation. Th th that was the common theme in the table, all the way down. And every one of the prophets that appeared, every one of the scriptures, there was there was some way that it was connected to my messenger. 
On the contrary, with this other table with Mark Taylor, I find him somewhere other than the prophets. He's way up a little further in a place where there's a lot of rebellion taking place. <laughs> you know, they're out, in the de- they're out in the desert, you know, in one place where Korah rebels. Then another place we see Absalom rebelling against his father. And then at least three other occasions um, where there's some sort of rebellion. And one of those, it's the whole nation's rebelled. They've actually set up idols and worship Baal. And so it's rebellion going on. So line after line after line, I'm looking at this table and I don't see any indication because I mean, we would expect to see prophet somewhere in the plain text right near, near the name or something. So, or even like in the rabbi Kaduri table where the prophets in the name, it's like they're interconnected like this. So I'm like, okay, that's a, that's an anomaly. Prophet loosely connected in that. And, and what we did find was a strange vertical anomaly, even challenging his, uh, his claim. Are you truly one of my prophets? Atta Nebo? Are you a prophet? And then another anomaly right next to that, which was you are in the midst of rebellion. And, and that rang true all through all the scriptures I saw in that table and in the fact that it, what we see him doing in public um, is very contrary to what the scriptures say will unfold, right? He would have us to believe, I heard him on a broadcast where he said that the Most High has not left, pulled his hand from this country. Actually, what he's doing is he's adding, more, he's giving us more time to, to you know, conquer evil. And America, Trump is going to be the instrument to, to turn things around and to save this nation. And what I'm seeing that translate into, even in the Christian world, is idol worship. Truly. I mean, idol worship doesn't necessarily mean some figurine where you're bowing down to it. Idol worship could, you put a person on a pedestal and that's your idol. You, you know, Trump, 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 Trump's going to save us all. Trump's going to make America great again. Trump, Trump, Trump. And nowhere in there do you see the promises of our, our creator or a, a salvation message or anything like that. It's all about Trump and making America great again. I even heard Trump say, we're going to make this nation wealthy again. That's mammon. That is not the spirit of, of our Elohim. And so I believe it's a delusion. And we need to be sober in our, in our spiritual walk in, in observing these things and not getting caught up in the hype. And that's what I've seen happen. It's just so many, even friends of mine, come against me when I did those, those two last broadcasts, unfriended me and everything. Just thought I was you know, just attacking Mark. And he's a prophet to the nation. You shouldn't attack the prophet. And I'm, I'm thinking, um, you know, if a man claims to be a prophet, and he is out there for years on end, spouting his mouth, he's saying all kinds of stuff, and not really a lot sticks to the wall, really. And then all of a sudden, in the midst of that, that prophet's ministry, he drops dead. Lightning strikes him, and he drops dead. Does it make any sense to walk out there and pick up that mantle and carry on in the name of that prophet who was struck dead? I don't think so. I wouldn't go around it for a million yards. Right? But Mark Taylor did just that. He picked up where Kim Clement left off and even even draws that conclusion himself that he's carrying on the torch of Kim Clement. Not a wise thing to do because what I've found with Kim Clement is a lot of what he said didn't come true. And you really have to kind of, you know, make it fit. And that's what a lot of people do in this Monday morning uh, interpretation we see going on in the Internet with, you know, Kim Clement prophecies you know i just it's not wise i don't think to pick up where someone's obviously the deuteronomy says I, you know sh- these prophets will surely die uh, and then we see that happen i'm reading bible and seeing the effects of that and to say that i'm you know talking bad about Kim Clement, the prophet of God, and I'm just pointing out the obvious that the Bible says these prophets are going to stand up and they're going to start speaking in my name, but I didn't call them. 
and they will surely die. So I, I, I think uh, if Trump called for nationwide repentance, then I would think of him differently. differently. You, you're exactly right. You know, if I start seeing the fruit of that, a leader that's leading us to the Father, you know, where he's leading us is mammon. And it sounds so good. Everybody wants to have a few change, you know, a few more change in their pockets and be out of debt. That's a good thing. And it sounds so good, right? Especially when we come out of 10 years, basically, of freaking hell with this last president. You know, so anything uphill looks better, right? So, um... A lot of people clinging to that as their, it's their great hope. They've even, like I said, raised him up to, to the status of, you know, we're worshiping him. In. He's our Messiah. He's our Savior. They did the same thing about with Obama, by the way. You remember Jamie, Jamie uh, Foxx declared Obama as our black Jesus, our Messiah, right? So it's, it's on both sides. It's very dangerous to do that. Um, we should be follow, following after the Father. And if we're all going the same way, Trump is leading, and he's leading the way, we're all going the same way, yeah, that, that would be the proper thing to do. But if he's not leading us to the Father, right, and he, he can have the lip service, he can claim to be a Christian, even though he says he's never repented, guys. Why? He, he said out of his own mouth he never did anything wrong, didn't have to. I'm, I would leave that to you to interpret what that means. I'm just saying it's very dangerous to get caught up in the patriotic hype that we see going around. You uh, see that in history throughout different leaders as well. King Solomon's wife uh, paid respects to you, uh, but didn't believe him. And um, it was, your God, Solomon, your, your Elohim, Solomon. The same thing with Cyrus. It was, it's your Elohim. He gives respect to him, but does not follow him or believe in him. The yeah. same. <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right. Cyrus had his own gods he was following after. The only reason he was called the Messiah of Yahuwah is because the Father will use a vessel to accomplish his will, even if he has to use the head of a state, because sometimes it takes their stamp to do it. Those things that Obama would not do, Trump will do. One example is move that uh, uh, embassy from Jerusalem uh, to Jerusalem and start that president precedence, right? To establish that as the capital. No other president has been willing to do that. They said they would, all the lip service, but they didn't do it. So what does the father do? He knows he's got somebody he can put in there, even if that's the only purpose he has for his life, right? It's to accomplish his will. We see this in, in um, Samson's life in the Bible. Now, Samson knew from a young age he, had, he was going to use him to accomplish his will, even it's revealed to him. So he had this vow, a Nazarene vow. He grew out his hair. He did not partake of the grape. He kept these vows, but he chose his own way. He even defied what the father says, do not marry the enemy. Don't go with the enemy. But what does Samson do? He does his own thing. Now, it never changed. You know, the, the anointings and the blessings of Yahuwah is, is irrevocable. So what he's called us to do will happen. No matter what we do, he will... We will find our way to his will. It's just that way. And so Samson could have done directly what you had commanded him to do, but he had to go the hard way. He did go the hard way. And in the end, what happened? The will of the father was, was accomplished, but it cost Samson his life. He pushed the pillars down and thus set into motion the collapse of the structure that killed all of these leaders. That is the story goes. Had he been done what he commanded to do, which could destroy the enemies, certainly not go sleep with the daughter of the enemy, because that was his downfall. He wasn't punished in the middle of that. He was allowed to make his choices, and he did. 
But in the end, the Father's will was accomplished. Samson chose the hard way. So, you know, when he wants something accomplished, he'll put somebody in there to do the job. Even if it's the only, their only mission in life, in spite of whatever else he, they do, there's something. I mean, for instance, um, Harry Truman. Harry Truman was an intercessor, intercessor for, the, for the people of Israel. And he was very instrumental in, in Israel becoming a nation, right? The father used him in this. Even Tricky Dicky, one of the most corrupt ever, gold of my year, reaches out to this guy. And because Tricky Dicky's mother was religious and had a dream that he was going to help Israel in some way or something like that, the story goes, he remembers it and responds to Golder Meyer's request for weapons in the 70s, or 60s, 70s, uh, later 60s. And it was because he, he knew there was some kind of connection. He was something he was supposed to do for Israel. He responded to that. And I say, if, even if that's the only reason why he was in the White House, in spite of everything else, the father needed a vessel at that particular moment to respond to Golda. Anybody know that story I'm talking about? There were war going on in Israel, and Golda Meir needed weapons and, and help. And she reached out to uh, President Nixon. And it was because of that, as he tells it, he tells that story, that his mother was very religious and had this dream that he was going to do something and help in Israel. And it was fulfilled. What we got for codes today, guys? I don't, I don't mean to rant for 20 minutes. I apologize. You know, so, sorry, Jonathan. I, I, have, <clears throat> I have finished the code, and um, I was going to show you today, but I am on my iPad, and I'm on 3G, the cellular network, but the code is in the computer, and the internet is down. So I can't. I'm so sorry. I have to do it on. We will meet on Monday next, isn't it? Yeah. I can I can show you then. That'd be good. Okay. Thank you. That'd be good. Chris, you working on anything, brother? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. <clears throat> you see my screen? I was just trying to get the colors right so it wouldn't confuse anybody. Um. Uh, oh, whoops. Hold on a second. Where did America go? <laughs> I lost, I lost America. Oh, here it is. This is Isaiah. Well, around seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 here. I'll show you the, the end of the page here. It's around C Isaiah nine is around here. And you got 10, 11, and up here, 8, 7. So it's, it's within the midst of that. And what I did is I marked Isaiah 9, 10. Actually, 10, 9, 10, 11, right here. This is Isaiah chapter 9, verses 9, 10, 11. And right around 11, the kuf here in America passes right through it. So you have Aleph, Mam, Resh, Kuf, He. That's America. But then you also have Yonathan here. Yod, Wav, Nun, Tau, Nun. And then Khan, Kuf, Aleph, He, Nun. Now, the hay in Khan shares the hay in the prophet running right up this way. Hay, noon, bet, yod, aleph. So you have it right here. Jonathan Khan, the prophet, right here. And then right above you have Yeshua. And then down here you have Salve, well, Yeshua with a, with a hay. Uh, in code right along here, uh, but you also have Yeshua with a Tau here. Actually, this line is uh, out of Isaiah 12. 
Actually, I should I should read you this first before I go. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, this code is I'm using America as the access term. So we're looking at it's uh, 1035, and I've reduced it like to a row skip of five, I do believe, down to 2000 and, or 207. So that's how many characters are across. So are you exclusively, you're in, you're in Isaiah exclusively? I'm in exclusively in Isaiah. Wow. Yeah, this, so this is, this is really profound. So just so I'll read this. So let's just be very clear on what this means for those that might be um, doubters. Being contained in, a, in Isaiah exclusively means it has no effect anywhere else on the, on the scriptures. This is all in that book. If we only had the book of Isaiah, we could find this code. So, you know, the, the position of books or missing letters anywhere else in the scriptures has nothing to do with what we're, we're looking at. This is what Isaiah was, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, encoded. There you go, Chris. Thank you very much, brother. I'll start at verse 7. And who has sent a word unto Jacob, and it, it hath lightened upon Israel, and all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of heart, the bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamore, sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Therefore, Yahuwah shall set up the ad adversaries of resin against him and join his enemies together, the Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. That's about America. Yeah, well, what, what, what Jonathan Kahn, you know, teaches in his teaching is this, because we're seeing the prophets speak to their time and the time to come. Sometimes they parallel, right? What happened to Israel before happens to Ephraim or America in the end time. America makes the same declaration. And it, folks, we saw Dashiell recite these same words. And not just him, another senator did it and confirmed it, right? They're citing these words saying, we will rebuild. It's a, it's a declaration of rebellion. Uh, it even says here, they say in the pride and stoutness of heart, right in the scripture, that they're full of pride when they, when they pronounce that. Yeah. And, they, and, and, and that's exactly what happened to us. The patriotic pride that swole up in every one of us, even me at the time. I was, you know, the Marine in me wanted to join back in the Corps and go to war. Everybody wanted to go to war. It was, you know, it, that's what it was all about, was getting us hyped up to go to this war, right? They had to legitimize it. And so, absolutely a conspiracy, but the Father use, uses the wickedness of man and the goodness of man to accomplish his will. So in spite of what happened in the conspiracy, we see a direct connection in this prophecy. Jonathan Conn points it out and writes a book about it, but he doesn't write a whole book of things that Jonathan Kahn said that the U.S. says. It's a complete different thing that's going on with Mark Taylor's book. There's no connection to the Bible. It's all what was told to him, um, and much of it is Monday morning predict of, you know, interpretation. I'm searching for Ephraim right now in, in the quote. Um, <clears throat> up here is actually my name. Coded along with the same well, yell. You're part of Ephraim. <laughs> I'm part of Ephraim. And Chris, the seer in Ephraim. And you also have the codes of right here. That's so cool. Standing there like a, like a spear. Almost. Um, uh, right, should the seer. Yeah. Okay. Let, let me read you this down here. This is Isaiah 12. Uh, and in that day thou shalt say, Yahuwah, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me, thy anger is turned away, and thou comforted me. Behold, 
You who is my salvation, I will trust and not be afraid for uh, Adonai Yahuwah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Yep. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And that day shall ye say, praise Yahuwah, call upon his name, declare his doings yeah. among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. And we know that our Father is a jealous Elohim, right? So if Amen. we superimpose, you know, Trump, in all those places where we say, you know, God is my salvation. Exactly what those people are doing on the hyper patriotic side of, of Trump is saying Trump is our salvation, right? Trump's name shall be exalted. That's exactly what they're doing. Nowhere, nowhere are we, or is, is he drawing us back to the father and saying, you know, folks, let's unite as a nation and put aside all of, all of this stuff and get back to what this country was supposedly founded on, which was, you know, the commandments, the laws. I mean, that's traditionally the Plymouth Rock, the, the Puritans coming. It was, they were establishing a place where it was dedicated to the most high. Even George Washington, the very place that was spared at 9-11, he supposedly dedicated this nation. So, Here we are. Yes. Um, this line up here is Isaiah 8, 12. Say ye not, a, 12, sorry, verse 13. I'll read actually 11. For Yahuwah spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a conf confederacy to all of them whom this people shall say a confederacy, neither Fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify Yahuwah of Yahuwah Zavaot himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense to both the house of Israel, for a jinn, a jinn is an unclean spirit, and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Um had that line there, uh, sanctify you as Abode himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. And that's what America's missing. M missing is, is a healthy fear of Yahuwah. There's no more fear of him. That's right. Exactly right. So, uh, wow. I just this afternoon before I, uh, head off to the hospital, I was looking at this and, uh, that's pretty profound. You know, Chris, I remember when Jonathan Kahn came on with his, um, his Harbinger book and everything. And I remember reading about all the, how I, Isaiah was quoted by so many um, different politicians and such, even on the Capitol steps. But um, I noticed it here, even in North Carolina, when we had the hurricane come through, um, I noticed it on like a local city level in Wilmington, you know, there were news reporters or even someone I know. It's like everybody's, um, it's like if they're not following the father, um, that's their first go-to. Like, we will rebuild. We are strong. You know, we we can do it. Yeah. It's a spirit. It is. But that's a great table to be reminded. That that's right. The one the, the the word harbinger means the one bringing tidings, and I believe that Jonathan Kahn, like Brother John John, also mm -hmm. believes that he's a watchman, mm -hmm. and he's also under the same uh, judgments or, or I should say uh, uh, convictions. Yeah. To get the word out as a watchman, otherwise blood is going to be on my hands, the same as his hands or or brother Jonathan Matthew Wright, his hand. Right. Yeah, we're watchmen, you know. We're, we're not the author of the actions of what's happening to Yahuwah. We are there to warn. Just because a warning comes doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. Right. But it is going to happen. That's his word. Resting on his word, judgment will come. It will come. Yeah. And it's, 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 a, it's a very, it's a, 
Yeah, it's a very sobering thing, too, to have that on your heart, even though you personally in the flesh don't want to say something or, or give a message. I know, Jonathan, you've, you, you've prayed over times like that. I'm sure we all have, but you have to do it because we're going to be held accountable. It's not an easy thing to do. No, it's, it's not. When you're not the popular in, you know, voice and message, you know, just like with, with Jeremiah, nobody wanted to hear him. Um, the, the prophet that was in, you know, um, in the same time as Jeremiah was right before him prophesied about the judgment coming over Jerusalem and the king had him killed. He, he running through with a sword. So I mean, prophets were like the scripture says, you killed my prophets. I sent them to warn you and you killed them. So Jeremiah was persecuted. He was thrown into prison. I mean, they, they didn't want to listen to him. And he was right. He was, he had, he, his voice was the one that the father was speaking through. And the ones that was, had the ear of the king telling him, Oh, it's going to be seven times as great. You got favor with God. It's no, no, we good. Everything is great. King. That's what they were saying. And they were, you know, still filled with idol worship there. And so I all this made logic to the king in the first place. It just doesn't make any sense because there were three incursions of Nebuchadnezzar. And the only way I can think that he, he saw that maybe these prophets were right was the first two incursions. Nebuchadnezzar relented. He backed off. It was only the third one when he came in. So Nebuchadnezzar had, uh, I mean, um, the king had all this time um, that he had warning that he was making this decision to rebel against what the prophet was warning and go the other way. And, he loses all of his sons. All of his sons were killed. And then he is, his eyes are plucked out uh, in the end. And I think that's symbolic that he didn't see. He would refuse to see. I, he had eyes to see and refused to see it. And I think symbolically that's why his eyes were plucked out by Nebuchadnezzar. The father was making a statement here. He had eyes to see and he, and he was blind. So let him be blind. Horrible, horrible outcome of it, you know. But the whole time, it looked like a positive thing to all the people. As the ship's going down, the, pl the band's playing on. Must be good. Must be under control. <laughs> right? Everything must be under control. Yeah, the, the, the pride really set in there. The, I, I believe from the writings, they were just so disposed that the Heavenly Father would toast his own throne and toast his own house. They couldn't imagine it. They, could, they couldn't imagine that. Yeah. And it just escaped them that there was a destruction coming. Yeah. And the same thing with Americans per se, or in, in, um, uh, specifically, they cannot fathom a foreign nation coming on this land and, and occupying this land. Captivity. Um, some of the things that, are, that seems like will happen, war will break in the, in the boundaries of the mainland. Uh, it looks like, you know, war will come to this country um, at some point and people will be shocked. It would be like, you know, cause you've never seen nothing like this only in another country can imagine. So we, we see prophecies that says I'm a lady and I'll never be a widow and never lose children. And yet in one day you will be both. And it's, it's, a, it's a mirror image of America, the attitude of America. This, I am, and there's no one else but, but me. You know the selfies? I am, and nobody but me, baby. That's the attitude in that prophecy. And I could see it in America. This me, 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 I don't care about them attitude. It's, it's, it was just like the Titanic. America is too big to fail. Israel is too big to fail. The Titanic is too big to sink. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's the imagery. It's just it's impossible. You, you can't sink this ship. America's too great. It's going to be greater than it ever was. And it's it's sad that pride. It's not an easy. Sad. It's not an easy message to bring people. It's not popular. People thumbs it down. Oh, you just doom and gloomer. Same words Mark Taylor says. I'm not going to be the doom and gloomer bringing you, you know, judgment on the earth. I'm going to bring you hope. I'm going to give you hope. 
Well, you know, that's exactly what those prophets did in, in the time of Israel rebelling. They wanted to give the king hope, telling him what, what it, they were prognosticating what it looked like, what they could see outside the walls. They could see the army withdrawing. They were telling the king, oh, you have favor with God. Look at the armies going away. So, so they were seeing with their eyes what they thought was happening. And it wasn't that Nebuchadnezzar with, was withdrawing. He was regrouping in many cases, re resupplying, because they were under siege, you see, in Jerusalem. Uh, this walled city. A lot, of, a lot of security in a walled city, guys, especially when you see the army back down. Makes me feel, you know, very secure. Might even poke my chest out and walk my head proud, very proud of these walls. Right? Pride sets in. They hide behind the eagle. And the flag, wave it, man. Well, you've got that fleet of Chinese ships parked off Venezuela at the moment. And some interesting things going on there with them, uh, you know, talking about going to a crypto kind of currency and um, some of the stuff I was reading about, that's going to upset the Rothschild system. Yeah. They've only got a couple of countries to go. Um, back in 2000, the list of countries that were not on the Rothschild banking system included all the countries that America has since attacked. There's now only two or three of them left. Yeah. And who are they picking on now? North Korea, Syria, uh, sorry, Iran. In Syria. <clears throat> the only ones to go before that money system is in every country on the planet. And then they'll flick their switch at some point after that, I suppose. Yeah, but yeah. the yeah. deals that are going on with China, China is infiltrating everything. Yeah, from within. Anything, anything could happen. They could enter America through those southern borders. Yeah. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. uh, can, can I read, read for you one scripture? Sure. Um, it's, um, well, uh, I wrote it in the chat. It's, you, you know, maybe Isa, Isaiah 45.7, uh, forming light and creating darkness, making peace and creating evil. Yes. I, Ye Yahuwah, do all these. Very good point. Yeah. So that's exactly what I was he, talking about at the beginning of this is he, even with Obama's administration, he accomplished what he could with him and then brought yeah. in. The he is in control. Exactly. It's his will that's going to be done, not the will of, you know, somebody that's, you know, hyper hyping up people in America saying, we're going to just, we just got to bond together. We got to, we can win this. You know, it's not about the will and the power of man. The scripture that Chris just wrote, read. It's, about, it's, it's by all his about the Father. Yeah. It's calling on his name. It's exalting him. It's following his statutes. I mean. Yeah. I was kind of shocked when I first read that. I created both light and darkness, good and evil. What? Yeah. 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 It was, um, it just seemed abnormal. I was like, wait a minute. You, you, he created evil. He created. And so you have this balance of these forces that are in this continual um, lock and step battle of light and darkness. Um, just it's strange. But the scripture says, who can know the mind of the, of the, of the father? I mean, we don't know why, why, he's, why he's done things. He has a plan. I have, I have a code table that might follow up on that a little bit. Let's um, see. Okay, let me see. Uh, no, this is not the one. <laughs> let me see. It's not the right one. I hope it's here. Oh, maybe it's this one. Try this. Hmm. 
Okay, here we are. Okay, so the the excess uh, term is I was um, in um, I don't know I was looking for hiding on the in the third day and things like that. So I ended up in First Samuel this morning, twenty uh, verse five, and it said Daniel hid in the field until the third day. So I took those words and it starts off in the uh, analyzer. I may hide myself. So that's what this is right here. I used the whole Bible. It's a skip of, um, let me see, 1049. Um, so this is going, let's see which way, it's going upwards. It's, um, I may hide myself. Um, this yellow is the third day. It's there one time. Um, the orange is arc. Um, so it's there seven times. And it's kind of interesting that it's here kind of overlapping twice, and not overlapping, but kind of just stepping down and over across the whole top is the word arc twice comes down here it goes right through this uh, third day comes down here and then it's down here one more time um, the red I found this at the end and I put a rectangle around it because it kind of crisscrosses each other and this is the word Merkaba or chariots it's uh, Strong's 4818, uh, Memresh, Kaf, Bet, Hay. Memresh, Kaf, Bet, Hay. So it comes all the way down there. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. And then um, up here in the blue and the plain text is Yahuwah, uh, the light. And that comes out of... Um, um, let's see. I'm trying to think where I got that. I don't have what, that. Handy. What is the character represented as a dash? Uh, that? That's when they put Yod Hey Vav Hey for Yahuwah, but uh, they don't like to write the name, write or say the name of the Father, so they put that in there so that they're not saying it. Right. This this pro particular <laughs> program here is written by um, an Orthodox rabbi in Jerusalem. So they don't write out the name. And so in this case, and you'll see right, like um, where it says, right where the, she's got um, just, yeah, there's another, there's a hashtag there. So yeah. you see, that's Adonai. So they don't even write Adonai. They, they put a hashtag in there. So any representation of the father's name, it'll, it'll in, in some way, I think there's four different ways. Um, there's also an asterisk. Um, they, they represent a letter. And so technically the rabbi didn't have to, to type out the, the name. And so that's what it is. It's not yeah. technically changing anything. It's just using another character. Um, we know what that character represents. Yeah, so like right there. Is that what you were talking about right there? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I've noticed it several times seeing that yeah. dash. Yeah, and you'll see it yeah. all over. And sometimes okay. they use an asterisk or whatever. Um, so yeah. there is um, Yahuwah, the light. Actually, it goes on to say the light everlasting. Um, and, but then the purple is darkness. So I used a couple shades of purple, and this means from darkness. Um, let's see. Um, I used the mem to do from. So... Um, this one's going mem, chet, shin, kaf. And so I did different shades of purple because they kind of went, um, sometimes when they cross, just so that you can see, here's one going across, but then here's one crossing over and going up. And then at a wider skip, this one here. Um, so that's from darkness. Um, the mint green is the covenant. Um, 
Um, I used a hay to start off. So um, the co the covenant. So um, Brit, you know, uh, the Br the Brit, the covenant. Um, the black is um, he made. It kind of comes from Psalm eight, eighteen eleven. He made darkness his concealment. So you can see um, Samekta Resh. Wa, and that's Strong's 5643. Um, it's the word S T H R U, like through. The operator of the company involved in the deadly limousine crash that killed 20. Um, and here it was in the plain text. Um, down here is in the plain text Behold the days cometh, Anayamim Baim. Um, and let's see, I think that's all I want to show you, but I want to show you like right here, this text. So I may hide myself. Let me put my pictures back up on the side so I can do this. Um, so like right here, the scripture is in, uh, Jeremiah. And um, again, so um, Jeremiah nine seventeen, I'll back up a little. Um, Therefore, thus saith the Elohim of hosts, Yahuwah of hosts, Yahuwah Sabaoth. The Elohim of Israel, behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood, and give them water of gall to drink. I will scatter them all also among the heathen, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them. Thus saith the Thus saith Yahuwah Sabaoth, consider ye, and call for the mourning women that they may come and send for cunning women that they may come and let them make haste and take up a wailing for us that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids gush out with waters. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land because our dwellings have cast us out. That's pretty telling right there. Even with all the hurricanes we are having, we're, so many are out of our dwellings. Yet hear the word of Yahuwah, O ye women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth, and teach your daughters wailing, and every one her neighbor lamentation. For death is come up into our windows, and is entered into our palaces, to cut off the children from without, and the young men from the streets. Speak, thus saith Yahuwah, even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field, and as the handful after the harvestmen, and none shall gather them. Thus saith Yahuwah, let not the wise men glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am Yahuwah, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith Yahuwah. That is pretty powerful. Yes. He says, don't, don't, don't relish in the wise men and those mighty men and those that are, you know, talking about the glory of America and the wealth of America. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, let me see. Let's go back to this. So. That's what I was doing today. That is very, very, very powerful, sister. Thank you for showing that to us. Sure. Yeah, I've been praying. You know, this morning I just had to go out on my patio and just leave the sun going down and just say, Father, what do you want me to do? <laughs> 
You know, do you get to that point where sometimes you just have to clear your mind of everything and say, what do you want me to do? I want to be in your will and I want to do exactly, I don't want to waste time or energy or thinking. I just want to get right to it. <laughs> what a wonderful thing to have, you know, access to the codes and mm -hmm. to be able to sit down with the Holy Spirit and commune like that. And I'm glad that you just, you, you spoke about that because it's that I've had the same experience. And I know that is the case for, for several, that it is a really cool time that when you can just sit down and, mm -hmm. and I don't go out on the patio, I'm, my, my <laughs> computer is pretty much stationary. But yeah, that, those are the times where he, he'll take notice and he'll meet you there, right? You mm -hmm. come looking for him and he's going to reveal himself. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Oh, wow. Oh wow. <laughs> what? oh wow. Oh wow. Oh wow. I got I got I'm sorry. If anybody's next, you're gonna have to wait now. <laughs> oh wow. Right. Okay, okay. Show I've us. been working on this table. The access term is to the mountain of corruption. And that, that you will find in the plain text. And I took Brother Jonathan Matthew Wright's uh, advice about taking phrases out of the out of the plain text and turning them into access terms this is actually in the plain text once you see it here i had the els of one but i got the lowest els table here at minus 4810 uh lamad hey rash hey mem shen het uh yo tal that's to the mountain of dis um of corruption now, the, the word corruption and the word destruction are synonymous with each other. And as Brother John uh, pointed out before, the Mem Shen Het is an abbreviation or the root word for Mashiach, or that's what we believe. I do believe we can make a connection to that. Now, here's the access term. Uh, Lamed He Resh He Mem Shin Het Yo Tao. Now the access term is very in a very small ELS, and this runs exclusively through Yahshua. Now, <clears throat> over here you have, will have Nibiru, Nun Bet Yod Resh Wav, right next to it. You have the, again mem shin het yo tal in the opposite direction in the positive. This is in the negative. This is to the mountain of corruption, but this here in the positive is actually the dis the, 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 the destroyer. Right. And right at the very base of the the word, you have Yahua or Yahushua. He is opening. The destroyer, and right in here we have Yod, He, Wav, Shin, I, and Yehushua again, and Yehushua right in the plain text there. Now, if you look in here, this is verse uh, Deuteronomy thirty-one twelve. Uh, uh, 11, I'll start in 11. When all Israel has come to appear before you, who are thy Elohim in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their learning. Gather the people together, men, women, children, and thy strangers that is within thy gates, that they may hear and they that they may learn and fear Yahuwah, your Elohim, and observe to do all the words that, is, that are in, in this law. Hello. And right in here, in the, in the blue, light blue, is it this scripture right down here, where this is the word fear, right here. Fe to fear, they shall, uh, this word is that, no, the yellow right before is to hear that they shall fear, and then you have the Aleph, Tal, and then Yahuwah Elohim right here. They have here right here, but also it's in coding. The word here, to hear, but also you have Yahushua right behind it. <laughs> yeah. 
and you have this, the stars of Yehushua, they shall hear and fear. And that's crossing right in here where it's talking about the destroyer and Nibiru right there. Hallelujah. That is like, whoa, I was just listening to Paula talking and I'm like, oh, whoa, no. Just and so then, cool that you are able to pull a phrase from the scripture and it actually found um, it encoded as well because this opens up an, 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 a matrix that right. has all kinds of interconnected information um, that's in here. Incidentally, in the story of Joshua and the long day, uh, we were able to find back when I had, uh, did a little thing with um, um, uh, Broussard, I found a connection to that that alteration in time in the, in the planet standing still and the planet Nibiru, um, which was pretty incredible because it kind of confirmed a theory that we had both had that there was, there was that, the, that the father used something in the solar system, just like he does in us as a vessel of his will. And so we'll see the cyclic um, in the scriptures. You'll see, and that's where he was drawing these connections um, the, the cycle of something is happening, right? But it, it, the story is running right through us right here with Joshua and then this destroying mountain. Hey, look at this. The, the Moshiach with the root word Mem, Shen, and Head in there with the Yod yeah. put in there, crossing right. right over as Yehushua. Yeah, and look at where war is right under him. In the second coming, guys, he's not coming to play patty cake, right? He's coming with a sword because it's, it's wartime. He is destroying the enemies of the kingdom. He's destroying the wicked. And so he's coming with a sword. And his garment is going to be stained with the, the grapes of wrath um, from the wine press, right? Um, so that's why it says a great and terrible day. And incidentally, the three days in thy chambers... In all the three-day references that we see, even in, in the third day, I'll raise you up, that we see in, in Hosea with the word rapture in there. We see this three-day theme going on. Well, that if we're right, that you who is going to fulfill these feasts verbatim to the moment, starting with trumpets, going 10 days into Yom Kippur, and then after Yom Kippur, you know, eventually we're going to be tabernacling. What if that three days that we are hidden is in that 10 days of awe, right? Because that's the time where he's reaping judgment on the world. So it fits if we're supposed to hide ourselves for three days. There's several references to this in the scripture. Incidentally, anybody know anything about uh, Corey Ten Boom? Cor who Corey Ten Boom is? She wrote, a, she wrote a book, Root. I sound like I'm Canadian. She wrote a book. She wrote a book called um, The Hiding Place, um, and based on that concept. Because she was, this was, this happened in World War II during the Holocaust, and um, where there was a lot of hiding going on and stuff like that, to, to, until the, the danger was passed. And that's the concept of, of her scripture. Um, she believed in a rapture, and they saw none. And so they had to hide. That's what the, the book is about. Um, Christian believer. This is a Jewish woman who was in the Holocaust in a concentration camp, which means she believed in Yeshua. So she's in this horrible situation, and she survives. Her sister dies, and she, and she later becomes this um, prophetic voice. She, she spoke a lot of prophetic things um, that I think will happen. But in her book, The Hiding Place, is a, a wonderful story. And I think it rings. Um, I, there's even a movie, I think, now called um, The Hiding Place based on that. Um, check it out. I found an access term based on that, The Hiding Place. So, Anybody else got any, any codes they're working on? Nope, still doing modules. Okay. All right. So I'll, just, I'll share with you guys what I got. Um, it's just to, really, just really the good. ones that, just the ones that I can't see it. 
It was terrible. It's I was okay. like, I was, I was working really hard on this, and then just boom, the internet goes off. Just it lock off. It happens to all of us. Yeah, it's like, but but I had it saved. So this is an access term. Um, it didn't come from, um, you know, pulling it from scriptures. It came from a lot of thought based on um, a dark star, some sort of planetary system. And actually, the the term itself says a dark star is coming. Um, the first ELS terms that I found in there, first things I looked for was Nibiru. And I look at the connection there, just huge. So it's in the black and it's also in, in the yellow, crossing on itself, uh, kind of like right there. But also the destroyer in red, you see that? So they're all connected. And then I started thinking about terms like the dragon, right? Revelation 12, the dragon that comes and strong connection. There's a dragon right there. It's also in the plain text as an abacus. So that's pretty, you know, when I see it as an ELS and an abacus, that's pretty significant. America, right here. Wormwood in the green. Now this is also, cool. so we see Wormwood is encoded in this, but it's also in the plain text, sharing a letter of itself. See that? Yeah, that's awesome. The, the phrase, the star in the purple, and this is at a skip of, um, I think it's 52, 46, 46. So we have the 45th president. Here we have a star at 46. And you can, I, what that means, I don't know. Um, let's see. What else is there? Um, NASA in the blue. There's NASA right there. And also another Nibiru going in the other direction. So NASA, Nibiru. And then the Gentiles there. And then the, uh, the, the, the verses that just kind of stuck out. And notice that there's a huge margin in the bottom. It's because it's a really large skip on this. So all of the scriptures are on a very wide cylinder. But what, what happens to that is it condenses your area that you're searching in. This huge margin down below is an absence of letters. So we're literally searching half of what I normally do, which means there's less letters. So the likelihood of these letters falling into there, you know, the, the, the uh, probability of that has changed because oh. it's less letters. I'll testify to that, that though, though, though these kinds of tables are, are very difficult sometimes to get some of those uh, very That's difficult less very letters. <laughs> letters, the, the larger the letters, the more difficult it is. And when you've got f five letter access, the, the, those, those are pretty good access terms. Or, yeah. Search terms, yeah. And so this is more than a, more than ten letter access term. So it's very significant. The probability does changes in, in tables like that because the likelihood of those letters being there are, are more. I mean, they're it's more significant because the odds are against it being there. Uh, you're going you're going a, a, through a lot of scripture. It's yeah. jumping lots. <laughs> yeah, so it's jumping a lot of scripture. So every verse and chapter that's running through here, I believe, is purposed. To run through here like like this one here in psalms and this is in psalm 82 um oh, oh i can't get to my control there it is um psalm 82 and i started it starts with verse one there it's a psalm of a soft so a soft in hebrew is gather right so so the the um, scribe in the in the temple at the time, his his name literally means to gather, right? So the song of us of a gathering, you who standeth in the congregation of the mighty, and he judge among the gods. Little G, how long will I judge? How long will ye uh, judge unjustly and the accept the persons of the wicked? Say law. So that means think about that, right? So what are we seeing happening in the world? Habakkuk. Couldn't take it. He, he wrote to the Father, how long are you going to let this go on? Right? So we see the wicked just keeps, just keeps perpetrating and existing, right? All the way throughout. So just think about that. How long? Say long. Defend the poor and the fatherless and do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. 
They would not, neither would they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods and all of your children of the most high. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O Elohim, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit the nations. Who are the nations? What are we talking about here? We're talking about all 70 nations that were initially in, uh, or just the nations that the Father said through Abraham, I will bless you through, in, to see like the stars, sand of the beaches, right? So we're talking about these nations, the fullness of the Gentiles. Very short chapter right through through there. But it, it falls on the cough of America and the bet of the Axis tournament, right? Um, then, of course, you got Psalm 83 right after that. What's Psalm 83, you would say? Remember Psalm 83? Made famous by... Uh, Bill Salas? Is it Bill Salas? Psalm 83 war, right? That's that's on the other side of the cylinder there. So here we come up to this blue. We're in Isaiah here. And and I've re really recently just started this. So the fact that I've only got two verses highlighted is because I've only just started looking at the verses. I was searching the, the ELS for this. Um, and I started at the bottom and worked worked up this time. So we're in uh, Isaiah. Why did it do that? So we're in Isaiah nine. Um, in this, that might sound familiar. Why does that sound familiar? Isaiah nine. Yeah, it is. But it also is the other things because there's a prophecy about the Messiah and other things. But uh, the people that walk in darkness have seen a great light and they dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them hath the light shine. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in the harvest and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff off his shoulder, and the rod of his impressor, as in the day of the Midian. For the battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us, and look, at, look how um, Isaiah, it sounds like he's speaking about something, but then it seems like he shifts gears and he starts talking about something totally different. Right, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. This is a prophecy about the birth of Yeshua. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty Elohim, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The increase of his government and peace shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment. You see, when Yeshua's coming, he's coming to establish his, his kingdom here. He's bringing the new Jerusalem with him. He goes to prepare a place, right? That place is the new Jerusalem, and you are a part of that. Incidentally, it could be that that's where you are for the three days um, of indignation. Just a theory. But the point is, he comes with his kingdom with a rod of iron to establish it on this earth. To rule over who? The meek, because they inherited it. And it's incidentally, the meek, that's their king who's coming. Fits, right? <laughs> He's coming to establish it with judgment, rod of iron, and with justice. So when they say that God is cleaning house right now, that's not necessarily true. He may be doing things to accomplish his will. The cleaning house comes when Yeshua comes, and it's from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Yahuwah of hosts will perform this. You have sent the word into Jacob, and it had lighted upon Israel, and all the people shall know, even Ephraim, that's, that's those in America, because they're waking up, that light is shining. The bricks are falling down. 
we will build and in, in, in this particular point in history at 9-11, that's when a lot of people woke up. They started going, wait a minute, what's happening? Why did this happen? The bricks are falling down. And we will build with huge stones. The sycamores are cut down, and we will change them into cedars. Therefore, you shall set up the adversaries of resin against them. So in this defilement, <laughs> he's going to set up adversaries. Oh, I say rebellion. I said defilement. It should be rebellion. The Syrians before, the Philistines behind. This proxy war going on in Syria. Hmm. Also, it says Philistines. That would probably be the Palestinians. That's happening both places uh, over there. And they shall devour Israel with an open mouth, for his anger is not turned away, and his hand is outstretched still. For the people turneth not to him, and smitten him there, neither to, do they ask for the rules of oath. Therefore, will you cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day? The ancient and honorable, he is the head. And the prophet that teaches lies, he's the tail. What? For the leaders of this people caused them to err. Oh, my gosh. This is start, starting to look like what's going on right now with the Trump prophecies and stuff. The prophet that teaches life, he's the tail. For the leaders of this people caused them to err, and they are led of them and are destroyed. Therefore, Yahuwah shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy in their fatherless and the widowless, and the widows. For everyone is a hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all this, his anger is not turned away but his hand is stretched out still. For the wicked burneth as the fire, and shall devour the briars and the thorns that shall kindle the thickets of the forest, for they shall mount up like the lifting of the smoke. For the wrath of Yahuwah Zavu is in the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of fire. No man shall spare his brother, and he shall snatch on the right hand and the and be hungry and he shall eat on the left hand and they shall not be satisfied and they shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm manasseh ephraim ephraim manasseh they are together shall be against judah for all of his anger is not turned away but his hand is stretched out still I think chapter 10 is pretty interesting because it starts out very interesting with woe to them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness, which they have prescribed to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right of the poor of my people that widows might be their prey and they rob the fatherless. You see that going on everywhere. So people are being taken advantage of lied to, led astray. Every false doctrine and lie from Satan that you can imagine under under the Shemayim is uh, it's incredible. So a dark star is coming. Now, Yeshua says, when you see all these things, look up because your redemption is drawing near. So he gives us an outline of, of what's going to happen in the end times and then tells us to look up. Why look up? Are we supposed to see something? We are looking for signs in the heaven. Will we see something? The scriptures say that men's hearts fail them for sight of those things that are coming upon the earth. And then we have this, all of this, um, I wouldn't call it circumstantial evidence. I would call, what, what would it be mitigating evidence? What would that be? Oh, this, these codes are like, just this internal evidence. Corroborating. corroborating. Very good. Thank you, wife. It's like corroborating evidence. What I mean by that is if we see in, in Revelation in, in indications other places like Isaiah that there's going to be something that happens in our solar system that's quite probably cataclysmic to some extent. And then we see 
also collaborating evidence in the codes, you, you can kind of deduce something there, whatever the topic. It doesn't have to be about Nibiru, any topic. You, you, you can deduce what's happening. It's, an, it's another level of information. And so uh, that's about as far as I got on that. Awesome code, brother. A lot of letters on that. I was surprised that it showed up. Um, Great table, Jonathan. Yes. Well, it, you know, that's the glory to the Father. But um, I just, I look at it as another piece of evidence that what his word says is true that these things are coming. There's no pause button on, on prophecy. He didn't say he was going to extend the days. Yeshua said he was going to shorten the days. So when I hear something contrary to it, you know, I scratch my head and go, wait, you know, that's not exactly what he said. What you're saying is contrary to what Mama Messiah says. So you, you, you make the distinction, right? It gives us that intelligence and that, and that ability to navigate in the, in the, in the deception. And I really hope that those videos and uh, broadcasts reach people and they can grab a hold of it. Like I said, I don't think they'll go viral. Like, you know, Scotty, Scotty does a 13 minute video on <laughs> dispensationalism and like 200,000 people watch it. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. And so I do something on it and like what 1200 people watch it. So it's kind of discouraging because it's, you know, I don't put out a 13 minute video and just kind of, throw all these details in and, and let you absorb it the way you will, right? Just kind of blanket statements and, and facts and just kind of let you decide what is what that means. It's kind of leading you into a into a um into a thought process. And it's even it's a deception. Um, doesn't even fit. Uh, but 13 minutes I, I it took me an hour, two hours to address that so people are not inclined to watch two-hour videos uh, you're right sherry thank you it's a wide road and worse than narrow um but uh, the, the, it's very counterproductive to see what people you love i love scotty you know we've we neck and neck walk, looking for the rapture um I, I started seeing things differently re things revealed to me differently so we very slowly the the uh the connection of, you know, we see things exactly the same kind of eroded. And now I've even seen that he's changed his thought processes and gone more uh, along the lines of, of um, Darby, which is kind of shocking. It's all out dispensational, you know, which is clearly different gospels because what it means is that Paul wrote to the Gentiles only and uh, Yeshua and the disciples spoke to the Jews only only that's rightly dividing the word and that is false amen uh don't don't be discouraged you've been a, you've been an encouragement to many of us brother uh, oh, bless somebody you. just wrote that in the chat you've been a real big encouragement your your efforts have, have not been in vain Thank his you. words will not return back to him empty and i hear his voice in yours hallelujah thank you father for confirmation and for those that are getting it um, it, it's, uh, it's encouraging, um, because it, it is, it is discouraging to, you know, to see that kind of thing happen and just, and think, ah, what can I do father? What can I do to, to get that message to them? It's, you know, it's not exactly easy on YouTube to, um, get people to watch your videos. There's all these tricks and things YouTube wants you to do like clickbait and, uh, you know, kind of enticing people to get on there. So it's really lying. Um, offering gifts and, and things like that, like a new iPhone promising, oh, you know, you don't really do it. And some of these channels that got millions of subscribers and it's in every video, they're promising a new iPhone to, to the next, whatever subscribers, all you got to do is like subscribe and share, but they never give an iPhone, right? So there's all this lying going on and people are, are clicking on these videos and getting these guys so filthy rich. Because that's what it's about. It's about the clicks and the advertisements that are on there. That's how a YouTuber makes any money is, is it has to have advertisement. Otherwise, um, you don't get paid nothing if there's no advertising. 
I know Brother Jonathan and a lot of you guys, Brother Chris, and you all been encouraging to me. Our Heavenly Father, you who uh, wants us to know his pain. <laughs> really, he does. He doesn't, he doesn't want to hurt us on purpose, but he does want us to know how much it hurts him to see yeah. his creation in, in such destruction. And when I see the righteous hurting, like my brother and myself, and I see others to hurting because of those who are walking in, in ignorance, um, I know how much more my, our heavenly father hurts, <laughs> you um, know? So I, I know uh, it's, we're, we're a reflection of his heart. Amen. Anybody got any other codes or anything you want to discuss while we're still here? Actually, um, I put a, a few more search terms into the table that I just shown you. <laughs> and I need, to sh I need to show this to you. Oh, okay. I put in, here, I'll show you on the side. Since I talked to you right after hearing the word I and hearing, I put in wormwood, uh, the law, shmita, which can be used in its in its action, at, which means release, and then I put in Eliyahu. Uh, you'll find wormwood. Lamed, Ayan, Noon, Hay, right in here, with uh, to the mountain of destruction and, or the, the mountain of corruption and the destroyer here. You have Aleph, Lamed, Mem, Ayan, Noon. The Noon is sharing the Noon in Wormwood, and that's he, and hearing. And then you have the word release right in here. And you have Yehushua's name right underneath. And then right up here, uh, kind of standing on where it says, and hearing, you have Eliyahu right here. And then down here with the abacus effect, you have Eliyahu and Yehushua together over top of the word war. <laughs> and then down here again, with the Moshiach as Yehushua and war, you have Wormwood right here. And then you have uh, the law right up here. This actually is the, the year of 5780. Now, now, I didn't show you this before, but I put in 5780 because I seen this on another code concerning, uh, um, it was uh, Dr. Glade, Glazer, one of his ta tables, Dr. Glazerson, you have 5780 with a five letter interpretation, but you also have a hey, tau, shin, pay. Now, the pay, the pay is an 80. To get 80 using uh, five letters, you would use I and yod, the 70 and the 10 to get 80 which makes it five letters, but you can also do it in four letters by just using the pay, which means 80. So I've got a both, one on top of each other, and you have Eliyahu sharing the same line as 5780, and the word, and hearing, and hearing Eliyahu. So that's and 2020 then, in... Uh, yeah. In the Gregorian. Now you have also hey rash. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong way. Hey, hey, tau, wav, resh, hey. The Torah and the wav and Torah is sharing the wav with Yehushua in here. And then down, oh, I already showed you this. Oh, here you have Eliyahu and Nibiru right here. So just adding some coding, <laughs> simple coding in it, and it's just follow, follow, like right here, this is so strong, so tight. I haven't seen a code like this at all, well, since your, your tables, uh, but 
writing here is very, very, very tight and very strong. Yeah, you'll see the conjunction of those, you know, related terms like that tightly shearing letters, interacting with verses when you got something, you know, really significant there. There's actually two other tables in, in larger ELSs, 69,222 and 71,066. I can post the file in HipChat, and if anybody wants to tackle those two ELSs, they're more than welcome to. Um, I would like to have more clarification of this of this gathering is I'm new and curious as it relates to the days of darkness or the days of woe. Uh, um, I think we're still trying to discover that um, the days of darkness or the days of woe. We're talking about the day of the Lord. Is that what you're saying there, Willow Lee? I do think that we have these different time periods that we see uh, indications that it's clearly a different time, like the, uh, the time of sorrows or um, what have you. There are different ones that are listed in like um, Matthew 24, the end of the era, um, you know what I mean? So um, I think it's transition points where things change or maybe ramp up. For that great day that's coming on us, uh, so I think um, he's preparing us for that. So, um, three days of darkness would, I would think, be related to whatever cataclysm happens. Some think it's going to be volcanoes going off. Uh, of course, this is all speculation. We, we're looking how these prophecies are going to be fulfilled. Um, knowing some of the some of the greater points and trying to fill in the gaps in between is, is um, kind of the technique here. We're just beginning to put together what the three hide, hide in thy chambers and what the three day connection is, you know, like David hiding for three days in the wilderness and, you know, David was hiding in caves and stuff and, um, from the enemy. What is that all about? You see this three day connection all over. Yeshua in the gate, in the cave for three days. Um, anyway, there's a lot of uh, revelation in it, and we're just now unraveling this, really. Any other questions? How are you doing, Sandy? I'm very quiet today. I'm doing good. Um, I was gone for a little bit because I had to take a phone call from my son. Doing good. I, I was interrupted. I was going to present today, but I haven't been able to look at this code for a week, so I need to read over it before I, I do anything because I, I, I don't know where I left off. But I, I'm good. I'm on module 38 now. So wow. Doing good. Okay. Mm, let me see. Uh, Dala, so I, I'm about to do module 10. Is there a, an essay associated with that? Do you know? Dala, you're muted. Oh. On the on the Nazarene book, on the next Nazarene book, you oh, there, definitely, there definitely won't be an essay on the book itself. No, um, not that I'm aware of. I mean, if if there is an essay there, I've, I've gotten to where I've gotten pretty good at making sure that you have access to those essays before you see them on the test. So okay. Yeah. If, if there okay. is one, it should be there before before the test, but. There's definitely no questions on the book. Okay. Straight up vocabulary. Yep. Cheers. All right. 
if, if there's nothing else, guys, we can probably close right here and um, I can get uh, this video rendered and we'll see you at the next meeting. All right. Uh, thank you guys for being here today. Thank you, Chris, for sharing with us. Um, we're still praying for you, brother. And uh, thank you, thank you very much. You guys, don't forget about Scott, who's away in uh, harm's way down there and uh, doing tree work and stuff. All right. Amen. Abba Yahuwah, we're thankful for these students, Father, and what you're doing in their lives. And uh, we just give you all the glory. Just amazing revelation. Um, and we just ask that you continue in your walk with them, Father, and just blessing and keeping them uh, protected because they're your elect. And um, we ask that you bring them back to us safely in the next time that we meet, Father. And until then, just nurture them and um, reassure them in uh, their spirit, Father. And we ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Shalom, everyone. Thank you, brother. Shalom. 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 Shalom.